Does medical email marketing work? When we look at a lead source or how does a, how does a clinic attract a lead into a practice, email marketing is often one of the, the last things that they might do prior to booking something like a consultation. It's a, it, it's a natural journey that actually progresses through to email marketing from awareness when you find out about somebody with uh, paid traffic, let's say, then you come to the website and you might do a lead magnet. So you get a little bit of information and then off the back of that lead magnet, you've given your email and then email marketing begins. So email marketing um, then starts to automatically send some pre-programmed set up emails to send at determined schedule. So you can, you can identify what the best send schedules are and we track and optimize that on a weekly basis. And what, what subject lines should you use? Because you can write a beautiful email, but if somebody doesn't open it, then that's kind of a pointless activity. So basically optimizing an email follow-up sequence to the point where people actually open them and ultimately book a consultation. So email marketing, if it's done right with the right strategy and is built into your complete marketing funnel, it can work beautifully. The key things that you want to look at for email marketing is make sure you have your emails set up to follow up with anybody who is inquired but has not gone ahead with a consultation. You want to have a follow up sequence that goes up after those people. And you want to, in that follow up sequence, not be shy. You want to remind people that they had a need, that they got busy because life gets in the way and usually it's busyness that's getting in between people and taking the next step, not disinterest, which most people think, oh, they're not interested. I'm not gonna bother them. And that's a very common um, barrier that, that clinics put in the way, but it's not true. Um, and you need to inject um, humor, stories and reality around, you know, life is short. You've, you've said that you have an interest in this and there's a whole life and world waiting for you on the other side of eye surgery. So email marketing if done in that way is a really wonderful marketing tool. And I really encourage you to include it in your toolkit. So one of the biggest objections that we get when it comes to promoting our marketing ideas is doctors and surgeons having some serious concerns around email marketing. And I think that often what they're doing is they're confusing it with the kind of spam email that they might get in their emails that they never look at and they just think is a bother. Often that email is loaded, laden with sales messages. It's often banal. It's just got a whole bunch of links in it, a whole bunch of exclamation marks, hyping things up. And they don't want to be that guy. They don't want to be that person that sends out those kind of emails, right? And I'm with you. We agree 100%. You don't want to be that person that sends out those spammy emails. So what do you do instead? How can you get the benefits of email marketing, which are significant, while not coming across as a sleazy salesperson who would like nothing better than just to flood your email box with useless material? Well, you gotta think about emails in a different way. In the old days, when advertisements used to be the thing, we knew that somebody needed like 13 exposures to the same advertisement before they took even one action, which is like a phone call or you know, mailing away for something or going into a store. 13 exposures. That's a lot of exposures. I mean, if you got 13 exposures of your own message, you probably get tired of about five or six. But in reality, other people are not tired of your message because they've got loads and loads of other messages that they're, you know, you know, integrating and absorbing. And really, they're looking to cut through the clutter and look for the messages that matter. So I want you to reframe the whole email as instead of something that's selling something, rather something that is providing a heap of value, a tremendous amount of good content that is valuable to the person, whether they buy from you or not, whether they take that next step or not, it's good, good value. And that's what's gonna make your email stand out across all the others and actually let that person actually read it, compel them to read it. And then we don't expect the sale or a conversion off the first or two, two or three emails. Instead, we might expect it on the 13th email because we know that repeated exposure generates familiarity and familiarity is what creates trust. And when people trust you, they take action. And if you haven't followed up for all those times, you're gonna miss out on that really, really valuable conversion, which often accounts for sometimes between 20, 30% of the kind of conversions that we see coming to you that wouldn't come from email. Back when you were in school, you had a relatively easy way to ascertain where you stacked up against your peers and colleagues. 
However, now that you're in a practice setting, it's a little bit tougher to know where you stack up, not only against your ideal, but also against your peers and your colleagues. And that's why we created the premium practice score. And if you'd like to take that test, if you'd like to see where you stand up against the best in the world, or perhaps the best for yourself, you're able now to take that and then see where you stack up.